coming out of college. Uh, you had some media scouting reports basically projecting you as an NFL bust. Uh, much later on, you had a conversation with Michael Jordan once you know, at the Celebrity Golf Tournament, and you asked him basically kind of a, about staying motivated, uh, I believe. W what did he tell you? You know, one of the interesting things he told me, he said, you know, every day, you know, the, when he plays a game, you know, he always thinks there's somebody in that stadium, in that gym that's never seen him play and he wants to put on the show. He wants that, that one person that's never seen him play to go, to go away saying, wow, I seen Michael Jordan play. That was impressive. He said that's how he stayed motivated. And you know, I started to do the same thing. You know, as I get ready for games, I would say to myself, there's someone in here never seen me play in this stadium live. I'm gonna put on the show today. And you know, there's just little things like that to keep you motivated, but that was one thing that I remember that MJ told me. I want to take you back to your college days. There's uh, an interesting story that I think tells a, a lot uh, about your character. Uh, when, when you were actually arrested for marijuana, um, how well do you recall what transpired on that front? And I should say wrongly arrested. Yeah, I had always heard from my mom you know, be careful who you hang around. Everybody's not your friend. You know, everybody, everyone doesn't have your best interests in mind. And I was simply about to go out to a party that night with some of my buddies, you know, a, a guy that I went to school with who had some of his friends come down from his hometown and, you know, they're doing their thing. I had no part in it, but I'm part of the party, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden, Things go bad, you know, police come, everybody gets arrested, you know. So that's one of them situations where you, you know, taught me a valuable lesson. Right. You know, watch where you are and everybody is not your friend. You got to take control of your own life. Why demand to be tested? Well, I mean, because. You know, I wanted to prove my innocence. And, w and was this to the, the new coach? Yeah, that was, this was to the new coach. I was still, he was just coming in and he didn't know me from Adam. How, how did that conversation well, go? Well, you know, it was, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, he was like, I'm, I'm disappointed in you. You're becoming one of the leaders of this team. I'm disappointed. Coach, I had nothing to do with it. I, I wasn't smoking. I wasn't doing anything. I was just getting ready to go out to a party. Test me if you want. You know, it was like one of them conversations. Okay, well, you know, I'll test you. Went down to the trainer's office, test me. You know, he called me back up in the office. He said, you were right, you know, you were negative. Stop hanging around, you know, these knuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of how the conversation went from Coach Fran. And was you know, that kind of the takeaway from that? Sometimes you, you know, as a as a young man, you know, mom mom don't know what she's talking about, but mom always know. Yeah. You know, and so it was just kind of one of them things where you know the coach had to kind of, you know, drill it in. Hey, stop hanging around knuckleheads. These guys are not your friend. You're going somewhere. They're not. So uh, overcoming adversity, I mean, seems to be a common theme throughout your athletic career. Coming out of college, you had a report commission that would basically project where you'd go in the NFL if uh, you decided to come out early. How frustrating were the results of that report for you? Well, it, it was a, a shock to, to my system. You know, it was really, you know, eye-opening to, you know, they was projecting me to go third round. You know, and I felt like looking at, for one, I felt like the things that I had just done you know, it was. I know it was my first year starting, but I led the lead, I led the nation in rushing over a guy, you know, in Ron Dane, who was projected to go first round, you know, and I was going to go third round. So, in in other words, they was telling me that there was 15 other running backs at the time that was better than I was, and so you know, it just motivated me more than anything. I mean, I... And largely I, because of where you went to school, you think? Right, okay. absolutely. You know, because I went to TCU and I didn't get much exposure. Right. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a, a national, um, 
you know, program, a dominant program. Or the big schools, Texas, you know, Oklahoma, these teams didn't take a look at me because really they didn't know who I was. Teams, you know, in college, they already have they, they picks. Going into the senior year, they already target the guys they know they want to offer scholarships to. And at that point, it's all about just monitoring how well they do their senior year. Well, I wasn't on these guys' radar, you know, and so I didn't get the opportunity. And, and so, you know, but going back, it was the same thing, but, it, you know, it motivated me for my senior year in college. I put that, that stat up on the wall, you know, what they were, you know, what the uh, scouts were saying about me, my strengths, my weaknesses, while I was projecting. I put it up on my wall in my room. I looked at it every day. And, and as I went out the room, you know, going for the day, going to school and practice, I would look at it. And it was instilled in my mind. And another thing I used to do, you know, I used to tape my wrist and I used to write underrated on it, you know, so I can always see that, you know, during the game. And the other one I would write, feed the family, you know. And so things like that just, I think it, it drove me and motivated me.